Hello, my friends. It's me, Karen Valentine. And I am back to continue on with um, this cute little kitty from Pixabay. So um, if, you, if you saw the last video, um, you saw that I was having a little bit of a struggle. Um, you know, that happens. And we keep working through it until we get to where we want to be. That is, um, that is what we have to do. So, um, it's actually still the same day. Um, I had some lunch and I, um, I'm back at it because I can't, <clears throat> I can't leave it, um, in a spot where I'm feeling unhappy. It's just my, it's just my nature. But anyway... So we are going to continue on, and I, I am thinking that I'm ready to go ahead and do um, the, I don't know what you call that on a cat. Is that the muzzle, or is this the, I don't know. Anyway, her, the, the, the front of her squishy little face where her, where her mouth is, that's what we're going to work on right now. And then um, I will get as far as I can in about an hour and a half, um, and we'll just keep, we'll just keep going. So... Uh, yeah, so I'm looking at this right now. <clears throat> it just occurred to me. I'm looking at this and I'm going, all right, why does this look um, lighter than I recall it being? I don't know what the answer to that is, um, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like all of this still needs to be darker. And I thought that it was darker the you know before I don't think um drafting film absorbs um pencil <laughs> like I have some other um papers that I've worked on where I have um done the whole page and I have been in love with it I've been really really happy you know, I put on lots of layers and I feel like, okay, this is great. And I, and I, and I walk away from it for the night and I come back in the next morning and gosh darn it, if that, um, paper didn't just soak up all the layers of pencil that I had put down the day before. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit confused right now. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been looking at this going, why does why does his face look so light? I don't remember it ever being that light when I was working on it. <laughs> so I um I'm a little bit confused right now and I kind of want to shut the camera off and go look at previous pictures to see if I'm losing my mind or what, because all of these places that I thought were so nice and dark were not. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little confused right now, but apparently that is um, just kind of the way my day is going, so... I'm just going to darken some of these up because they're, um, they really should be a lot darker than, they're sh than they are right now on this picture. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know what happened. Maybe it was just my imagination that I had made it dark enough. That does happen. You think one thing and you come back and so I kind of wish I would have noticed this and done this off camera because um, I don't want to waste your time doing something that I've already done Kind of thinking about reaching out to some of my favorite people. If I um, I actually took a photo of it before I got started, like at the end of the last video, 
So when I, if I compare that <clears throat> to the other ones and I discover, yes, it did um, lighten up, I will definitely find out why that why it did that and let you guys know. Otherwise, it could just be my own my mistake <laughs> thinking that it was darker than it really was. I don't I don't know. I'm babbling. I'll shut up now. Okay. So, we'll do a little bit more dark here. feels a little bit better. It's not quite as um, thick. Those, these black lines are not quite as thick as they're showing on the reference photo. Well, we can always add some more um, darkness on the back too if, if I feel like I need it. But I want to keep going, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let that go for now and keep working on this. So um, I think I'm going to use Cold Gray Two. Let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll just start by adding this in here. I think I'm just going to put it all over the whole thing and then pull back with the mono eraser <clears throat> where I want it to be really white and um, get that slice tool going too. Definitely want to make sure that I have <clears throat> it dark enough for that slice tool to really show because this is a really fun place to really let the um, the whiskers really show on the piece. All right, I think I want cold grays for all of this. So this is cold gray four. some of that. <clears throat> it might even go darker. Here where the whiskers go. That might not even be quite dark enough. I might come in with a little bit more light in a minute. Let's get this in here first. are definitely darker. Um, okay, not warm. Cold. Cold gray five. Actually, 
Now that I look at that, it might, um, it might, we might want to do a sepia. I'm going to put some of this cold gray five under, under here. That didn't seem dark enough, so I'm going to use my black right in here. Well, we can always come in maybe and add some more dark after we get it sliced out in the In between this the cuts okay um. This is dark sepia. So I want to put some ivory in here. That might not even be dark enough. Gray five is too dark. Cold gray four. I want to do just a little bit more. Okay, I hope this works. <laughs> I'm going to slice first and then use the mono eraser. So I'm going to start. Are you in frame? Yes, I'm going to start here. lines you got to get rid of those lines because they start throwing you get rid of all of this that's better okay um, I'm just gonna do some more right here Let's 
do these. out with the mono eraser um, these areas that we want to be a little bit lighter can't decide which side of the tool I want clean make sure it's clean I'm just gonna pull out some more color so that it's a little brighter some cold gray four enough but apparently I did not but thankfully you can add it in after and you still get those you still get those lines okay I feel like this needs to be darker there's something there's something definitely not right here so this needs to be much darker.
the whiskers on top will help too. Hopefully I can get them bright enough. Okay, I almost still even think it needs to be a little bit darker. And I might try the sepia. I'm using such light pressure now. Like I'm barely even touching the paper. And this is not working. It didn't get. So I'm going to try the slice, uh, the mono eraser. Um, I don't know if I can get thin enough lines. Yeah, maybe I can. a little bit better and actually these go all the way up and maybe warm gray for these warm gray four didn't get these in the right place. And look here, see, that should be dark and it's not. And I feel like I did this already. All right, we're just gonna put some warm gray six in this spot. I, I'm a little bit confused, but okay. looks a little bit better, but I don't feel like I can see as many st um, strokes as I want to see, first strokes from the slice tool. I'm adding some more dark in here because I feel like it needed it. This distance is too wide. I messed up there. But how did I mess up? Because this is correct. That might have needed to be just a tiny little bit up higher. So I think I can fix that though. Pretty sure. Yep. <laughs> Let's just erase it right out. Let's try that again. not perfect but it's not it's not terrible
that I use for that sepia, dark sepia. that's not too bad um, however I still feel like this needs to be darker gray and I don't want to do that on the front I want to add some gray underneath to try and tone down the brightness and see if I can't make this look better so the nice thing again is if I do this and I decide that I'm wrong, I can just erase it. better. That's definitely, definitely better. Alright, let's do that some more um, over here because really it's not very bright right there. We want to tone that down a little bit. Curious now then if I do that under here. Now some of this, you know, when you do it on the back, if you've high if you've scratched out or highlighted so that you can get it to be white, um, and then you put this on the underside, your white is not going to be white anymore. So you want to be cautious of that. But feel like this needed it. Yep. That made a, that, that was good. That made a big difference. All right. Um, maybe a teeny little bit more gray. in here. Sometimes it takes, you know, stepping away from your piece or in this case, turning it upside down. Um, I'm looking at it again. Maybe I should have used, that was warm gray, wasn't it? Yeah. I get my warm gray and my cold gray pick up the wrong one all the time, which is a little frustrating. I don't know if I can fix that. I may not need to fix it. It may just have been, uh, you know, not a big deal. Okay, I want this right here to be brighter. This I don't think needs to be brighter. There's still something, maybe this needs, this feels like it needs to be feel fuzzier and I don't, yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay. Um, the only thing that I'm noticing is that this really looks like it's bright. 
this is just not dark enough still. Um, so, I'm going to put some more. Should I do warm or cold? No, oh, I think warm. I'm going to do some more warm gray. only problem is I don't want to make the whiskers um, I don't want to make the little flyaway whisker hairs look too dark no I think that's okay let's do a little bit right in here over here. So, if I can remember what colors I used over here, that would be helpful. I think I'm going to start with this bit right here. And this is Beaster. This is one of those cases. I'm, okay, so I'm really curious now about something. So I'm going to pull out a piece of watercolor paper. All right, let's see what I can find here. Okay, this is mixed media paper, not watercolor paper, but I think it will do the same thing. It's got a nice um, texture to it. So I want to see if we can get this kind of fluffy uh, texture by using the texture from the mixed media paper. might not be quite textured enough. I'm actually going to just I don't know what I want is for it to get this kind of messy bubbly kind of look you can't use hot pressed watercolor paper you got to use some gray into this. Um, warm gray four.
is, I'm really curious how I'm going to handle all of this out of focus stuff. <laughs> to be honest, I really just don't know the answer to that yet. All right, I'm going to keep this in here. Um, I'm going to keep this watercolor paper under here because I am not going to mind at all if I get that kind of bubbly, um, rough texture. I think I'm going to like it. So, all right. Let's bring this in a little bit. this line here and I don't know what that's from uh -huh. uh. I don't know what that is See if we can't cover that up. Okay. This is, it <coughs> might be too heavy. So I'm gonna come in. I wish I would have remembered which pencils I used for this. <laughs> um, I guess I'll go with Beaster. We'll use the mono eraser to pull this out to white. Well, not really white, but you know what I mean. So this comes down about that big. So That was um, dark sepia, and this is burnt umber. Okay, and then this is back to Beaster. 
I don't know what other color to use um, to get that really light gray. Oh, you know what? Let's mix that with some warm gray one. Can really feel the texture um, when I press hard like the warm gray one I was applying a pretty decent amount of pressure I don't want to do that with the beaster because it really um, would really be too dark So we've got this that needs to be dark brown. So I'm going to use the burnt umber. dark sepia. Warm gray two. Maybe some cold gray one. Easter. Kind of feels like I need to start bringing in more of the grays, I think. This is warm gray four. All right, do I have enough here to slice into? Burnt umber just is so um, red. Um, let's do dark sepia.
get some more gray. More gray in here. And I'm applying a pretty decent amount of pressure because it's light. And I really want to get some color down on here. It is really interesting to feel the um, the texture of the paper, the watercolor paper underneath. This is um, Cold Gray 4. Okay, I'm debating on how to proceed. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of dark sepia because actually this should come in. Do a little bit more beaster. And actually, I think I'm gonna do a little, do a little swirly, smushy. Not really smushy because I'm not pushing hard, but I, I want this fur here to look a little bit heavier than it was looking with me just making straight marks. Give it a little bit more texture.
some. I wonder if I should add this after I slice through all of this. I might do that. Let's try. And I think I'm going to slow down and slice. So I'm, I'm doing this only, you know, really small. You can see that, but it looks really good in person. Um, you can really see the the, the fine squ squiggly hairs. Okay, so I like the way that's looking. Um, let's work in here with warm gray four. Can you guys see the, um, I'm sure you can, the wobbly texture the, from the watercolor paper underneath that really adds to the um, fluffy look. I like it. And then when we do the squiggly Slice tool, I think it'll make it even better. Okay, I'm going to add some Beaster in here. This is um, dark sepia. This or black would be fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to start by trying to get some of this dark color in here. under the eye. Right in here. That actually could be a little bit warmer. We'll do um, burnt umber here. I mean the difference between right here and, and the rest of the area we haven't touched yet 
is huge. I really am happy with this. So I think if I just keep going and then do that all over everything after I get all the color in where I want it, I think that it will result in a really nice finish. get out of frame accidentally because I'm so absorbed in what I'm doing. Okay, so we've got this here and I think we'll switch to the burnt umber. So now is coming the time when it's just nothing is really in focus. off. It doesn't have to be out of focus. If I wanted to do the whole thing, you know, sharp, I, I could, I guess, but we'll just see how it turns out. This we want to try and keep kind of white. Um, I'm going to use cold gray one. Um, this dark sepia seems Sorry, that's not, not the one I had. The dark sepia seems to be the right color. So, put some of this in.
Um, at this point, it's just kind of pick some colors and lay them down, I think. some more dark sepia. I'm avoiding this area very strongly. I'm kind of wondering what would happen if I like used pan pastels or something on there instead. I think we might try a pan pastel background on this. I guess I should have thought about that ahead of time. Okay, can you see how this really looks purple? Am I the only one seeing purple in this? I just really see these purpley tones. So this is violet. And just like before where I thought, oops, I think I put too much in, I don't feel like there's too much in there anymore. So, We're going for it because in truth, the, um, the artists that I've seen where they put colors into their pieces that are not um, the colors that you would think would be in the cat, like you would not look at that cat and go, there's purple in that cat. Um, but the artists that I've seen who use these colors in with what they're doing. Um, the finished results is so beautiful and so much more um, interesting. So I'm trying to learn from the amazingly talented people that I like to watch. And so I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we have this line here. So obviously our um, yellows and light tones come all the way up and out here. And let's get that in. Let's get some warm gray four in here. Okay, this was the area that I said was going to be lighter, so make sure you remember that. This now needs some burnt sienna. feeling so much better about this now than I did early, <laughs> earlier in the day on the last video. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to keep working through this, I think. Um, we can always 
lift this with um, the mono eraser. So I'm going to put violet down first. Then I will put my grays on top and hopefully that will um, soften the purple the violet color and not make it obnoxious. And working with the side of the pencil really seems to be um, helping very much to keep it really soft. Okay, let's switch to dark sepia. darker in here. I'm just going to pull it off the paper so that I don't get the um, marks on the paper that I'm using. Okay. It looks like I probably cut this off short. I have no idea why I did it like this, other than the fact that I wanted it to fit into a certain size um, frame, so to speak. So that's probably why I cut off the bottom edge. So in order to make it look better, looks weird anyway so this was the big one this shouldn't be I want to let's make some changes here Okay, let's switch to some warm gray. Warm gray five. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is 
go ahead and bring it out, fluff it out, and then use the um, <sighs> sorry putty eraser. Then use the putty eraser to pull back and soften the edge. Okay, so this is where that texture is really cool um, because we're not going to use a slice tool or anything down here because it's supposed to be soft out of focus um, fur, where, so you wouldn't you wouldn't see uh, you know defined hairs down here. Um, but you would see texture, and so I like what that's doing. Now, that looks very purple to me. That's almost too purple. And you know, I'm just curious. <laughs> I should probably check my, um, I should probably check the picture on my screen because, you know, when you print something, it always looks a little different. All right, so it has a purpley tint. It's definitely um, grayer, um, more than purple on the actual screen. But I like how this is looking, so. So, just curious if I use my mono eraser, because this looks very harsh. I don't want it to look that intentional. <laughs> so that looks a little bit more natural, I think. Better. Okay. Um, so, I want a little bit more depth in here. It's still a little bit too light. So, this is dark sepia again. Gray three. And I think some black. Am I in frame? I want less texture showing in here because it's dark. Okay. Um, I 
think I'm just gonna leave my paper here. It's really hard to not get marks on it, so heck with it. I'm just not gonna worry about it. Start pulling the This texture is really interesting. I'm really um, kind of enjoying it. I'm curious to see what the slice two will do in it after we get that going. But it really makes it look fuzzy. Maybe I'll do a little Caput Mortem Violet right here. says hi. Getting there, getting there, getting there. Um, all right, let's start working in. So here's our dark sepia. on here. Okay. Okay, we'll start bleeding these colors. Bleeding, blending. We'll start blending these colors in together. Okay. 
Okay, the question is, do I want that down here? Oh, I don't know. Let's see, maybe we switch to a slightly less texture paint. Just a little bit less texture feels more right. We've got some light colors coming. We've got we've got this coming down here. And I don't think I want to get <coughs> the um, I don't want I don't want to lift it off of dark, this dark gray. So I'm going to bring this in to try and avoid putting color on that. Just do it like that. I'm not sure that I like the um, texture over here. I liked it over here. Um, I think I want less of it over here. And let's see, what did we do? I might have to come in. back with the eraser before I can really see what I want to do next. This is the less fun part. <laughs> the head, the head was fun. This is, um, this is the necessary part. to get this down so I can pull back, pull the layers on top out. And of course, you know, I like to work to the edge of the paper. I don't know why. What I should have done was left a border and then cut that border off. But every time I do something, I learn. It's like, okay, Next time, make sure you leave a border on the bottom because <laughs> it's not the easiest to work this way.
All right, let's try some um, dark um, cold gray. Sure, why not? Cold gray. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. You know what? I have an idea. I'm going to stop the camera and I'm just gonna keep darkening all of this up a little bit. There's nothing special for you to see and it will um, save some time on the video. I mean, I'm literally just coming in and, and continuing to darken this up and I don't, this isn't very interesting. So I will be right back after I finish doing that. Okay, so I um, think that we can do a little bit of blending with our um, Caran Dash Full Blender. Don't press too hard. Um, just let the blender do its do its job. No need to press hard. Just blending a little bit, kind of. It's kind of mixing these um, the gray and the sepia, the dark sepia, together, which is nice. <laughs> My husband is home, obviously. Hi, honey. So I think I like it. Um, I think I like it. I like it over here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this yet, but I could easily change my mind and discover that I love it. <laughs> All right, let's get some more um, dark sepia down um, in here. And then I'm going to pull out with the This just does not look right. What do I need to do here? This. Doesn't look right. Um, right now it looks very um, harsh. It's not soft and fluffy. I think that's why I don't like it. Let's do some. Warm gray three. Well, let's see what happens. I haven't done hair like this on the drafting film. Or, really, come to think of it, I haven't done hair like this. <laughs> anywhere. I think the, the Tombow eraser will really make a difference when we get that in here. Um, this is Beaster. what we can do here. I want this to be softer. It's still too 
heavy. I think I'm going to want the slice tool. Um, let's do that. So if I kept going with my slice tool the way I was doing it before, the hair changes direction and starts going down. So I want to see what happens when I take the putty eraser. to the slice tool. What do we got going on here? I think I need to get some dark. Didn't I do that already? Is that it right there? It's kind of in the wrong spot. Kind of needs to be here, but I think we can take advantage of that. Yeah, see, again, I'm getting confused. That's that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but you know what? Again, I said it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be close. It has to have the feel of... I'm going to use my, my um, Tombow. Mm. Oh, I might rather use the... I think I'm going to 
is this? Quite right. It's a little too heavy right in there. Um, cold gray. Maybe a little bit more dark sepia. Kind of as I start um, pulling the stuff out, it's, it's starting to become more apparent to me where I need the extra color and the extra darkness and all of that. darker it shouldn't be that um, it shouldn't be that bright so um, gray we're gonna go with gray and I actually think I want cold gray because I want to kind of uh, have it look that bluey purpley color might put some squigglies in there too. <laughs> Let's see, let's pull out some more. Boy, that's, um, that doesn't pull out as easy once I, well, that's, <clears throat> that's interesting. So I, um, where I blended the color, with my, with that thingy-majigger. <laughs> what is that? the colorless blender? The um, mono eraser does not want to cleanly pull that color out like it has before. So that's good to know. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, it gums up, whereas before it didn't gum up. Lesson learned. Okay. Well, I won't be doing that again because that is a that's a that's a fail. That's that's a fail. So if we but you know, you don't know until you try. So if you guys happen to be following along with me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I steered you wrong on that one. But you know what? We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it just like this.
this might have been a, you know, like one of those happy accidents, because I think this looks better. Anyway. I know I should be using a brush. Sorry. Okay. Let's, let's go ahead. I'm going to do these more straight, I think. Oh yeah, that's my that's the problem because it works just fine on top of any area <laughs> that I um, did not use that blender on. So when I edit, I will try and remember to um, tell you to stop. Don't use the <laughs> don't use the uh, blender pencil. just on this black that I use, you know, just on this dark that I used the thingy on. Okay, I'm going to gray this up because that was too, too bright. Let's keep going with It's kind of all like this on the on the reference photo anyway. You know, it's it's got this squiggly this squiggly fine hairs. And actually, I'm going to do them up. Well, see, don't get so fast. I got to stop and slow down cuz I don't want I want little teeny tiny squiggles, not big ones. And if I start getting too fast, then I start getting the big squiggles, which is not what I want. Take our time. This is as dark as I would want it to be.
Okay, well, it's not, um, it's not exact. I got a little lost in the, uh, I got a little lost in the hair up in here, I think, but I don't, um, I don't think it's turning out too bad. I'm gonna keep doing squigglies in here. And if they don't show up, the nice thing is, is that when I do, um, if I do wanna add some depth and put some darker colors in, the, the squigglies kind of, you know, act as that resist and then they do show up. I could probably make squigglies forever. I really do think the smaller you can get them, the better they look. And I, um, as always, when I'm filming for some reason, I seem to rush. So. All right, well, this... This is just, I am kind of bummed that I used that tool, but uh, the blender, I am kind of bummed I used the blender. But I, I think it's okay. It just takes a little bit more effort to Make sure that there aren't any clumps of, of uh, pencil. Actually, I really like the squigglies. <laughs> it really, um, it really makes the hair look a lot more real. I think. doing. I'm not crazy about what this looks like and I, I'm not quite sure how to make it look better. I kind of wish I would have used a smooth paper over here. I like it over here because it looks like soft fuzzy fur but over here I don't know that it should look that way. I kind of feel like it should be a little bit more solid. Um, but I'm not sure of adding more pencil. You know, I could do it on the back. Let's try adding. Let's try adding on the back. Um, this is cold gray four. Is that what I want? Make sure I have a smooth paper. <laughs> Make sure I have a smooth. dark enough. I might want to go with a black. All right, let's go with black. Why not? Um, I am going to do it in strokes to start with and see what it looks like. Well, I don't know that that did much good at all. Let's, I guess 
this, I'm gonna not add strokes. So I'm just kind of laying down a pretty even layer. But still, even though it's an even layer, it's it's a layer with the strokes going in the direction of the fur. You don't want to go crazy and scribble on the back because I think it will show. tempted to want to do that over here too then let's see what we can get this is again one of the things that I love about working on the drafting film it's just being able to adjust everything working front and back Careful not to cover up too much of those squigglies because if you, if you cover them up, they'll just be dark and you won't see them. Okay, let's see what that does. Okay, I like it. Um, and I think I can add Some more black on the front. It's good. Okay. All right, I could work on this thing for ages and ages, I think. <laughs> I could just keep keep going. I think we need I think we need more of some like dark sepia. as I start to look it's like all right well this isn't dark enough and there's a lot more black you know out here and we have to not forget this the um, whiskers I'm going to want to clean up a little bit and I still there's still some things that are not right I think it's too bright I think it's too bright
right, um, so. I'm gonna dull this color down with some cold gray. Do I want cold or warm? Cold gray four. what that looks like before we keep going. Okay. So What's neat is that I can kind of see where I want it to go, like to create more um, shadows. <clears throat> that looks better already. Um, let's do some more. Let's do it down here. And I don't mind covering up some of those squigglies to make them more gray instead of bright. I liked the way it looked better. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Back to. Oh, yeah, see, that looks a lot better. Um, okay, we want to keep some of this fairly bright. Those be kind of bright. Just cleaning up a little bit so I can really kind of get the last of the details and figure out what I want to do. Okay. trying to make some space here for myself. Okay. Um, this is pretty soft and I think I like it. I think that's okay. I do think that that's okay. All right. So that's too dark. Definitely don't want to use that. My dog is being obnoxious. My husband came home from a kind of a picking trip with his buddy for tools and stuff. And uh, obviously his friend is here with him. That's why Cooper's being obnoxious. 
Okay. I feel like this should have come down a little bit more. So, I'm wondering if I not bad. This actually, I don't know why I put that in there. I don't even know what that is, but it seems like we need to have this be a little bit bigger. Let's see, what do I want to use? Let's try Caput Mortem Violet. And then I might mix that with something else. I don't know. I might not be able, I might it might be better off just leaving it. Or maybe we go, we do this. Some burnt ochre. I don't know why I started messing with this. I should have just left it alone. Okay. Um, warm gray four. Should have just left it alone. Actually, I'm going to say not, might not, <laughs> was not. Um, yeah, I think I'm... Okay, one more try. This is Cold Gray 5. I think we need a few more squigglies here, though. You really can not even really see these. I'm just doing it anyway. Oh my God, okay. All right, how are we doing on 
on depth. Let's, I'm gonna pull my black out of the little thingy. Okay, um, how are we doing on depth? Do I need to add it to the back? Or am I happy? I might be kind of happy. <laughs> okay, putting in the whiskers is scary. <laughs> because there's no turning back. You have to commit. You can't do it gently. You can't second guess yourself. You just have to commit and make some marks. So I'm gonna start with the black. It looks like he has two black ones on top of each side and then this little short one that starts out black and turns to white. I don't know if I'll be able to do that, but I am gonna, I am gonna, commit. And I don't have to press too hard because the drafting film takes... Whew, this is scary. All right, what direction do I want to do this? Away from me? Towards me? Whew. Okay, I'm just going to do one first and see. Whew. And it's almost like if you don't get it dark enough, don't do it again. One, um, you get one shot because otherwise you um, you have to go back over and that never looks good. That never looks right. So we're just gonna okay. Now see, here's a case where I'm telling you not to do it and I feel like I need to do no I'm not doing it because if you go over your line um, you will you will never <laughs> you will never get over your line as smooth and right as the first time and then you will be really bummed because it won't look like it'll look like you did it twice so make the commitment do it and do not do it again or else you'll be sorry <laughs> kind of what I have to say about that. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can slice out some nice white whiskers. I am going to use the, um, the, the dull side of the blade, which is a little bit flatter and um, hopefully will create a, the size of whisker that I want. And you, you kind of want to push so, you know, that one went right over the top of one that I'd already done. No big deal. You kind of want to push pretty hard to make sure that it... <sighs> These are going to show up. <clears throat> These are not going to show up, I don't think, as bright as I want them to. better over here, I think. Let's do a couple more. I don't think they're going to get any brighter than, than what we're seeing. And, and they're not bad. Um, they're not bad. All right. Am I done? I 
again, you really, um, you can really mark up your film and get it pretty dirty if you're not careful. So just be aware. Um, I do have to decide what I want to do for the background. We will do that in another video. Um, I'm either going to use pan pastels or, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like, part of me likes the white. Part of me likes the white background. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I have to decide. Um, how are we doing? Are we happy? Mm, I feel like the eyes need a little bit more green. The eye, I kind of feel like the colors faded out in this a little bit. I gotta say, I don't, I don't know why, but I I really feel that they did. Um, they shouldn't have, there's no tooth, there's nowhere for it to go, and unless I just like rubbed it off, but I, I don't think I rubbed it off, I don't think I did that, so I don't, I'm not sure what happened there. All right, I want the eyes to be a little bit more intense. Um, so do I, I want, um, what color green do I want? Juniper green is kind of bluey green and dark. Let's try that. And maybe I do it on the back side. you know, you can always. on this one needs to be darker. This one's okay. Um, no, there's not enough. To, okay, so I want like a um, like a thalo green. Let's try thalo green. Light thalo green. No. This one. Thalo green. better. Dark sepia. Yeah, I'm. T I think the colors, the black, all faded out. That's so weird. I need to. I'm gonna reach out to my. Uh, I'm gonna reach out to Bonnie. Bonnie Snowden and ask her if that's ever happened to her before. Because my blacks were black when I when I started this, and they are. They are all gray.
Yeah, I feel um, like... I want to apologize to you, but I don't... <laughs> I want to... It's like, I'm sorry I have to do this all over again. Like... I don't think this is a common thing to happen in drafting films. So it might have been something that I did. It might have been my, um, you know, I might have just been not even realizing it and rubbing my hand over it and rubbing this stuff off. I mean, it's, I won't say that that's not a possibility. It's definitely, it's definitely a possibility. Because if you notice, <clears throat> I was not using my um, paper towel to protect my work. And uh, that is what I think happened. I think I just rubbed it off myself, to be honest. Um, because I've used drafting film several times and it's never happened before. So I think it's just user error. I'm still not feeling, I still feel like there's something not right here. I don't, don't you hate it when that happens? Like you look at something and you're like, I know that there's something not right here, but I don't know how to fix it. Or I don't know what's wrong. Like something's wrong, but I don't know what. Do a little bit more. So you get down to where you get the majority of it done, and this is where I can just keep tweaking for uh, for a long time. still get a kick out of the fact that when I lay when I use the, the slice tool and slice through this drafting film now this that necessarily will not be the case on regular paper um, because on regular paper when you use the slice tool you want to pull off the pigment but not touch the paper um, on drafting film you can actually um, slice into the drafting film and you kind of make a, a little valley and so when you go to um, put, put more color on top, if you use a light touch and not um, press down too hard, your pencil slides right over the, I know I said this before, right? I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. But still, the, the pencil slides right over the top on the drafting film and still leaves the, um, the groove or the indentation where you where you scraped, which is pretty cool. All right, guys.
all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way that this has turned out. Um, you know, this is a this was a good compromise, sort of. I'll say a good a good fix for um, me screwing up and and um, using that Karen Dash blender on that. Um, Yeah, if, if I hadn't used the blender, then I could just take my, my um, mono eraser and make more fluffy lines, but I'm not going to because it'll just mess it up. I'm not gonna do that. Um, all right, I am going to, um, I'm gonna call this done as far as being on camera because at this point I am tweaking the most tiny minute little details that I think would probably bore you guys to death and I'm only going to be if I say anything I'm just going to be kind of repeating what I've already said so um, I think I'm going to call it and if I do any more tweaks um, you'll see them in the in the finished, um, the finished piece that rolls um, right after the video, right shortly. So um, I might come in and just darken on the back side some of these areas. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't think there's much left to do. I'm going to. Um, figure out what I want to do for a background. I'll probably do a little bit of practicing on another piece of drafting film um, so that <laughs> when I go to show you what I do, I'm not, um, I'm not experimenting. And um, I might add a couple more white whiskers on this side. There's not much point in adding them over here. They're not showing up, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I might add one more black one just for the heck of it. And that's it. Alrighty, well, it didn't, well, it wasn't too bad. Five videos, <laughs> I think. Who knows how many hours. Um, and, oh no, it'll be six videos by the time we get the background on here. So, um, thank you for hanging in there with me. I hope you um, enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And again, if you guys are, um, are coloring along with me um, and you're going to post online, use the hashtag... Um, coloring art by KV. Shoot, did I use the word coloring? Darn it, I think I just used art. Art by KV cat. So hashtag art by KV cat. And, um, and then I'll be able to see it. So, all right, that's it. I will see you guys for the background shortly. Until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Love ya. Bye.